Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about five TFSA mistakes that we see people make all the time. So people coming into our office, I would say the majority, if not all of people make at least one of these mistakes that we're going to talk about in the video today. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button below. It takes one second. It costs you nothing. And if you enjoy these videos, make sure it's the thumbs up. It really does help get these videos out to more people, helps with the YouTube algorithm. And as we know, more Canadians need to hear good quality content, how to invest better, retirement, financial estate, and tax planning. So thank you for joining us today. Let's dive into it. Money mistake number one is around beneficiary designation. So with the tax-free savings account, there's two ways to list a beneficiary. One is a beneficiary. Another is a successor holder. So if you have a spouse or common law partner, make sure to list a successor holder, not a beneficiary. What's the difference? Okay, either way, so let's say Jim and Sally, let's say Jim passes away and Sally is listed as the beneficiary on the TFSA. Okay. She will get the money as a beneficiary, but she could only put that money into her TFSA if she had the contribution room. Okay. If Sally was listed as a successor holder on Jim's um, TFSA, then she'd actually be able to lump it into hers, even if she didn't have the contribution room. Okay. So let's say the max room right now is 75,500. So let's say they both invested and it's grown a bit to 80,000. So they both have an $80,000 TFSA, okay? So again, Jim passes away. If they're listed as, a, if Sally's the beneficiary, it can't go onto her TFSA. She needs to take the $80,000, it's tax free to her, but now she needs to invest it. Well, if she invested $80,000 into a non-registered account, let's say at 4%, that's $3,200 in growth every year. So potential dividends, capital gains, or interest income. This could create a tax situation of potentially a few thousand dollars and potentially claw back OAS. So it's a big difference. Whereas if Sally was listed as a successor holder, not a beneficiary, then what would happen if they both had 80,000, his would lump onto hers and she'd essentially have $160,000 of TFSA, so there's a huge benefit. So make sure when you set up, if you have a spouse or common law partner, list them as a successor holder, not as a beneficiary. The second tip and mistake that we see people make all the time is using their TFSA as a savings account, okay? So when the tax-free savings account was launched in 2009, basically all the major banks in Canada pushed the tax-free savings account as a high interest savings account, and it should be, if the furthest thing from that, the tax-free savings account should be used as a long-term investment tool, much like your RSP. There's the odd occasion where we would recommend using your tax-free savings account to invest in a high interest savings, which right now, you know, if you go to EQ Bank, you're getting, I think they just lowered it to 1.25%. So let's say 1%, okay? Um, if you're saving maybe short-term, you have no other use for your tax-free savings account, then of course you could use a tax-free savings. But of course, you know, pay no tax on 1% on maybe investing five or 10 or $15,000, you're not saving a whole lot of taxes. So make sure that you use your TFSA, not as a high interest savings investment tool, but as an actual investment tool where you can grow at, you know, four, five, six plus percent every single year, long-term growth. So, you know, again, it's been marketed as a TFSA and a high interest savings are the same thing. They're different. A TFSA is an investment tool um, or an investment vehicle, whereas a high interest savings, that's just one of the investment options, much like you know an ETF of the stock market or bonds or whatever you want to invest in. That doesn't matter. But you know, don't throw uh, a 1% savings account into a TFSA. So that's something we come into quite often. So be aware of that. It was marketed really badly early on by the major banks. And we're trying to reverse that to show people how a TFSA can be used. Like, if you're earning tax-free money at 1%, big deal. But if you can earn you know, five, 6% a year tax-free, as that account grows, it can be hugely beneficial, not just leading up to retirement, but in retirement as well. The third mistake we see people make is using a TFSA, but they still have high interest debt. So if you're carrying credit card debt or any debt basically beyond your mortgage where you're paying, let's say over four or 5% uh, in interest, start paying down your debt before you start saving in a TFSA, okay? Let's eliminate that debt first. There's no point paying 20% interest on a credit card with a $10,000 balance 
and having you know a ten thousand dollar tfsa account that's earning say five percent that fifteen percent spread is costing you a lot of money fifteen hundred dollars in that scenario so make sure we pay down high interest debt first and then start working towards you know building up and investing it in your tax free savings account so the fourth mistake we see people make in their tax free savings account is contributing and then withdrawing in the same year and then trying to contribute again so you are able to kind of put money in and out of a tax free savings as long as you don't over contribute your maximum within that calendar year so let's give you an example here so let's say uh, January 1st 2021 you've never made a contribution to a TFSA um, you were 18 or older in 2009 so you have the full room so $75,500 and you lump that into your tax free savings account now fast forward to July and you know you've decided you want to buy a motorhome okay and that you know that $75,500 would just sitting there you hadn't had time to invest it you pull it out so the full $75,500 you pull out of your tax free savings account to have in your bank account so that when you find that right motorhome you can pull the trigger and buy it now fast forward a month and a half later two months later to the end of August early September you know the, with COVID hard to find a good motorhome you haven't found one and you decide to um, you know sit on it for a year and put the money back into a TFSA well you can't do it you've already maxed out for that year okay so for the, let's say 2021 you put in that 75,500 in January you pulled it out in July you cannot contribute that money back until January 1st the following year so 2022 okay so if you don't find that perfect motorhome that's 75,500 do not put it back into your tax free savings account that will be an over contribution and you will pay one percent penalty per month and on that amount it adds up quick so make sure you don't do that we're going to cover off a video on in, uh, in a couple days on over contributing and the calculations around that but um, make sure that if you put money in take money out if you're going to put money back in make sure you have contribution room so let's run through the same scenario but in january you only put in forty thousand dollars so you put forty thousand dollars into your tfsa account fast forward to july you pulled that forty thousand out to buy a motorhome and by september you couldn't find that motorhome that you wanted well you can actually put it back in invest back in thirty five thousand five hundred dollars because that brings you up to your seventy five thousand five hundred total annual contribution for the calendar year you did forty thousand in january you can still do thirty five thousand five hundred dollars okay so that's the only way to kind of put money in take money out and put money back in is that if you still have the contribution room so just be aware of that the fifth money mistake that we see people make and this is really a financial planning money mistake and and i've never heard of this talked about on youtube or anywhere else before but it comes around tax planning with your tfsa okay as you may know uh just before this video that if you pull money out of a tax free savings account let's say you put the max in you pull it out like we just talked about you can't put it back in until january 1st of the following calendar year so let's take an example let's say you've maxed out your tfsa it's doing well and you know you're going to need some money you know a large chunk of money between january maybe february march april like early first quarter of the following year okay let's say again you've maxed out your tfsa if you wait till let's say february and you pull the money out okay so let's say you've maxed out your tfsa and you need twenty five thousand dollars out of it and in february you pull that twenty five thousand dollars out and then fast forward later in the year you come across some money you can't put more money back into your tfsa until the following calendar year because you took it out in that calendar year but if you know that you might need that chunk of money and this happens a lot and we do it with clients actually quite often is we'll pull that twenty five thousand dollars out in december because we know they're going to need that money in the next few months what that does is come february we already have that money sitting in their bank account ready to go because we pre-planned for that and then later let's say july august september they come across a bit of money 10 15 20 thousand dollars maybe up to 25 they can now contribute that back into their tfsa because they haven't pulled any money out in that calendar year okay so by pulling it out in say november december before you need it it gives you that contribution room in the following calendar year so hopefully you're following me on this so this is a planning tool a financial planning tool that will run with our clients to give them the cash that they need early in the year but also the planning flexibility and the tax planning flexibility later on in the year so if we can put twenty five thousand dollars back into their tfsa in july and let that grow at five percent 
you know, tax free essentially, that starts to add up substantially for them. So that could save them, you know, hundreds, hundreds, almost thousands of dollars in taxes saved just by that simple planning tool. So um, that's something again, we I've never seen talked about on YouTube or anywhere else, but if you need money early in a calendar year and you've maxed out or close to maxed out your TFSA, consider taking that money out that you need early in the year in November, December, put it in your bank account to free up that contribution room for the following calendar year. So those are the five key money mistakes that we see people make in their TFSA. Okay, so the TFSA is a great tool. It's a great long-term investing tool. Uh, make sure you're using it, whether you're younger, entering into retirement, I'll always preach. When you enter retirement, having a TFSA funded to some extent is a great tool to have because if you have an emergency or you just need tax-free income, there's no better way to get it than a tax-free savings account. But there's many mistakes you can run into along the way. We've covered what I think are the five main ones today. Um, if you run into another TFSA money mistake, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your mistake or if you have questions around, can I do this, can I do that? Um, you know, leave a comment below, we'll answer that and try and help you out and make sure you don't make the same mistakes that we've seen come into our office. So thanks so much for joining us in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, make sure to thumbs up. It, again, it really does help get these videos up to more people and we appreciate you uh, tuning in. So thanks so much, have a great day.